Welcome to the Brand Theory Podcast, the podcast for helping you uncover your passion, realize your purpose, and take the aligned action. Together, we're going to prove the theory that when we live our lives on brand, the possibilities become limitless. I'm your host, Danielle Marchesi, branding expert and business coach. Let's get started. Welcome back to another episode of the Brand Theory Podcast. We have our first guest episode of 2022. We actually recorded this episode back in, I think, October or November, but things got crazy, as you know. Um, So I'm super excited to finally be bringing this episode to you, and I feel that it's even more relevant today to the conversations that we've been having both here on the podcast as well as in social media. And we're speaking with Malika of Miki Photo & Co., She's an award-winning brand builder, professional photographer, business mentor, and author of the Brand Photography Playbook. After years of working in corporate advertising, she now helps women entrepreneurs master their message, show up as a face of their business, and discover their bullseye niche. It's her mission to empower women to stop hiding and start emerging as leaders. When she's not taking pictures or building brands, she's at home with her three sons and husband drinking coffee or red wine and dreaming about their next global adventure. I love that. And also another fun fact about Malika, she is a fellow Jersey native. She lives up in Maine now, but you guys know how much I love bonding with number one, another brand geek and number two, uh, another Jersey native. So super excited to bring this episode to you and just a quick check in. Something cool is coming up with our sponsors with the the Real Style Exchange. I just wanted you guys to look out for. They are publishing their first ever, second ever catalog. And this is kind of the extension of that experience where we, you know, used to love flipping through catalogs or more like magazine. I shouldn't say like a a catalog. It's more like a a story-driven, experience-driven magazine. It's super cool. It's kind of that opportunity for you to connect with a certain product line that you may like that they host or a learn more about that product line, the story of how it kind of came about and easily shop right from the catalog. There will be both print version and e-catalogs available. So super excited about that. So stay tuned on that. And also, you know, I have to drop another hint for our upcoming program that I'm so excited about. I can barely contain myself. Um, I want to give you this date, February 7th. It will be another We'll be giving away way more detail about what this program is and what it will entail on February 7th. So look out for those two things. And without further ado, let's get into the episode. Welcome to the show, Malika. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here today. Yeah, me too. This has been a long time in the making. We had a coffee chat my first one in several years, a couple of months ago, and it was nice to connect with another person who geeks out about branding as much as I do, hearing a different perspective on it, and I'm excited for you guys to hear all these things that we're going to be talking to you about today. But the before we really jump into anything too deep inside branding, I know we just heard your intro, but I would love to hear in your own words who you are, what you do, and what you're all about. Sure. So... Um, My name is Malika Malhotra. My business is Miki Photo & Co. And I'm a branding strategist. I'm a mentor. I'm a brand photographer. And I specialize with working with female entrepreneurs who struggle with standing out in their marketplace, which is pretty much all of us, right? Um, I really try to help them master their message to get to the core of their brand story, Um, build up their visibility by becoming the face of their brand and trying to find that power niche so that they can position themselves as the go-to expert. Um, So I do that with, you know, female entrepreneurs. I've been in business since 2008 in the photography business, but when you are an entrepreneur, as you know, there are lots of pivots and changes and highs and lows. And so Um, In 2015, I started to specialize in the brand photography arena and then um, added brand strategy to the mix. And so now I'm actually doing a lot more mentorship, speaking, and strategy than anything else. Um, But I love what I do. I love empowering women to really have a voice and share their story and market themselves as the leader in the market. I love that. That was perfect. (laughs) Um, When you're saying a bunch of things about your story and helping people get their message across and really communicate who they are as a business. That is really everything I try to teach in, of course, my own way, which is 
the personal branding piece of it is so important. So guys, this is the, literally the perfect example of we do something very similar, but because of our personalities and because of just different experiences, different backgrounds, she has a expertise in photography. I'm sure that plays into a lot with her clients and her mentorship programs. And I just love that story end of it and helping you write that story. But here's two people who virtually do something very similar but there's plenty of clients for each of us. It's, and that's how we show up as ourselves. We're going to attract certain clientele. Um, so what is your, your take on personal branding? And can you speak a little bit more to that piece of branding in general? Sure. So, you know, I think branding really, you know, the definition is the impression that our businesses make in our clients' minds, right? But for me, I feel like branding is like the invitation that we are giving to our audience where we're saying, this is who I am. This is what I believe in. This is, you know, how I work, my process. This is a little bit about my experience, my skill set. And if it resonates with you, if it's in alignment with you, then our brand, my brand can help you solve your problem. So by creating and shaping that story, um, I'm actually extending an invitation to my network, my audience to say, if you think we're in alignment, then let's get to the next step. Um, and without a brand, without that invitation, then, you know, you just blend in with everyone else, right? And you become more of a commodity and then you compete on price. And so, you know, branding, as you know, is really, you know, taking all of our personality, our purpose, our passions, and shaping that in a way, <clears throat> excuse me, so that we can be memorable so that we can actually connect at a deeper level with our clients. Yeah, I love that. So let's talk a little about brand photos. How important are they really to our business? So as a photographer, I would say visibility is very important. And in today's modern marketplace, I think if you are not putting your face to your brand, you're actually leaving money on the table. Mm -hmm. And I know there's a lot of good. We're in agreement. Um, I know there's a lot of anxiety. There's a lot of fear of actually stepping into the spotlight. But I think, you know, customers are savvy now. They're, you know, going onto your social media feed. They're visiting your website. They're reading your blog. They really consider um, the work relationship a relationship. It's not a transaction. So being visible, telling stories about your brand becomes part of their decision-making process. So you have to show up. You have to be seen more than just a headshot. You need to kind of build the emotion and the story um, share your passion and the process so that they're better equipped to make the decision to work with you. And if you're not telling those stories, so many others are. And so they're just going to go to the next person who's actually putting themselves out there and sharing their story and building that connection. So it's a dangerous place to be if you are not. Yeah. And guys, think of that image of you or those couple images of you, whether that's on your social media, but especially on your website. Think of that as extending that invitation too. Yeah, you have these great services and you have this killer branding and colors, fonts, sure, great. But adding that photo, it really starts to help your audience shape that picture of what it would be like to work with you face-to-face -face or Zoom to Zoom um, and start envisioning, okay, well, she's cool. I can have coffee with her. Maybe I could work with her. It just helps. It's only, like she said, it's only hurting your business if you're not putting that face to it because people really want to connect with the human behind your business. Yes, exactly. It's that no like and trust factor, yeah, right? Absolutely. So people who invest in professional images are already going to differentiate from newbies, hobbyists, you're legitimizing your business. But then the more you share stories, the more you deepen the relationship with your audience, because they can get clarity on so many things because the picture is so powerful. So how do you work with your clients? How does it feel like to work with you? You know, what do you believe in? What are the values in your business? These are all things you can demonstrate through images. Um, of course, if you work with a savvy brand photographer who can kind of bring your brand to life through. Right. Yes. So that kind of leads me to my next question. I want to circle back to the stories, but before we get to there, what are some tips for people who have had brand photography before, maybe didn't love it or are completely new to it? What are some tips of how to look for photographers or what they might be asking from us so we can prepare for this and 
what's, you know, what to expect during a photo session? Yes. So a brand photo session, the first thing you need to remember, it's not a, it should not be a show up and shoot session. There's a lot of preparation and preparation, meaning the photographer should understand, you know, the essence of your business. Who is your ideal client? What are your future plans in terms of marketing? Are you launching something? What's the personality of your business? How are you different from your competitors? All of those strategic questions, which is the foundation of your brand, that photographer needs to understand that because how are they going to tell these stories about your business and help you, you know, differentiate from everyone else in the market and help you build a library of assets that you can have in the long run, yeah. you know, not just for right now. These should really be for the next year or two years because the whole point of branding is to build and be recognizable, be yeah. memorable. And yeah. so you want to keep using these assets over and over. So, you know, when you hire someone, you want to make sure that they have some sense of business or branding savviness. You know, they should be asking you those questions. You know, what's your vision? What's your mission? Who's your ideal client? And if they're not, then it's going to be on your shoulders to tell them all of that mm -hmm. so that when you're brainstorming, the stories are getting to the creative part that they're always going to be intentional, meaning they're meant to grow your business, not vanity images just to make you look shiny and pretty. They are meant to grow your business, you know, to launch your products and services, to establish you as the leader in the market. So, you know, that's the very first thing because, you know, you could hire a wedding photographer, a child photographer to do your brand photos, but they're not going to know about the business side. So then it's going to be up to you to make sure that they're clear on that so that they can deliver the images that you need for your business. The second is really, you know, checking, you know, their portfolio. What are some other people that they photographed? Um, you know, checking out what they look like on their website or on their social media. Are they using these images across all their marketing channels? Um, can you tell if they've had some return on investment? Have they had success with some of these assets that they've gotten from the photographer? Um, and then really it's the relationship, you know, being in front of a lens is always nerve wracking, right? So you want to make sure that you have a comfort level, that you feel at ease, that you have a relationship. So pick up the phone or meet these people ahead of time. You know, you don't want to just show up and then all of a sudden you're trying to like figure out if you're your friends and like you can trust yeah. this person to pose you and, you know, bring out the best in you. You want to have those conversations way before you meet and the camera's even pulled out. Yeah. And especially for somebody who may be nervous to be in front of the camera for the first time, second time, or just, just not their thing, having that relationship, that human relationship beforehand will really, really help with that confidence. And I've worked with plenty of brand photographers before, and they, it's really their job too, I think, and maybe you could disagree, of helping you with that confidence and helping you with those poses and stuff like that. So if you're nervous about that, Men definitely mention it to them and they, I'm sure they can have lots of tips and tricks when you get there. But w when you hire these people, these brand photographers who, like she was saying, have all these questions they're asking you, you're definitely in good hands and they'll, they'll make sure you're comfortable during your session. Yeah, because there was, we're specialists, right? We know exactly what these images are meant to do. And we probably have a team of people that will help you feel your most confident. So there could be a stylist. There could be hair or makeup because all of that is part of the whole, you know, photography process. You know, you need to think about the outfits that are going to best um, demonstrate who you are or who you want to be. Um, what about props and location? Those are all elements of the storytelling. So you need to make sure that you're working with someone that understands that all of these different aspects are important. It's just not, it's just not me and you. It's like all of these things are right. going to be brought together to tell the story. Love that. Can you take my brand photos? Yeah, I would love to. I wish I were still in New Jersey. I know. Um, okay, so let's shift and talk about really that story. Let's really hone in on what that means and starting to shift people's languages. So, so somebody who's kind of hearing this for the first time or really wants to dive into how do we tell stories online? How do we connect with our audience through these stories? Are we telling the history of our brand? Are we telling our products as stories? Are we telling what do we mean? I know what we mean, but they don't know what we mean. <laughs> what do we mean by let's help you tell your story? 
Yes. I mean, this is like the biggest question that I get. And I actually built a framework around this to help people understand the idea of visual storytelling. So I have a framework called the six images every entrepreneur needs. Mm. And once I divide it into these categories, then it's like a light bulb. And so the first always is what I call power pose, which is really your headshot. That is the bare minimum. That is going to legitimize your business from the first impression that you make. Every business person, entrepreneur, professional, they need one, right? So forget about the wedding photo that you had, that you cut out the shoulders of the bridesmaids. You can't do that. That'll make you look unprofessional. And you don't want that as that starting point. The next one I call is working girl. So pulling the curtain and showing what it feels like to work with you. So what does the space look like? Do you have a team? Do you use tools? Um, you know, is there an onboarding process? Are you doing things through Zoom or do you meet in person? And often I tell my clients to do just a major brain dump, you know, from onboarding to deliverables. What are all the steps? We know what it is, but right. our prospects do not. So a lot of that part of the process is an opportunity for us to educate them and for them to see the value of what we're offering and then also put themselves in the shoes of that image that we're showing. So maybe let's say if you're a coach and you meet people in person and you're creating this environment of, you know, coffee on a table and there's like uh, macaroons and flowers, you're creating this experience that they would not know unless you shared that visual story. Yeah. So working girl is a really important one that everybody needs. Then the third one is passion portrait, which is all about the feeling of your business. How do your clients feel when they're working with you and how do they feel after they work with you? We can demonstrate that through expression, through mood, through body language. Is it empowering where your hands are up in the air? You know, when they come to you, is there an image of them like frustrated, pulling their hair out of their, heads, right? And you can show that in images so you can paint the picture of what that transformation is going to be like. Um, the next one is lifestyle lens. So you kept saying humans, right? We are humans behind these businesses. So it's okay to show a little hint of your personal side. We are not just robots that are doing the professional work. We are real people who might like to travel or like to read or coffee in the morning or have a pet. So show a little slice of life so that you dimensionalize your business. Um, then the next one is future forecast, which is one of my favorites because it shows like where you want to go in the next three years or five years. What are your goals and aspirations? If we bring our audience with us on that, they're going to feel inspired. They're going to want to be on that journey with us. So I've had, you know, business coaches who've told me I want to do retreats around the world. And so then I arranged the brand photo shoot to be at an airport so we can be near a plane and bring that as part of their story. I love and then that. the last one is storytelling stock, because you don't want to always be your face in the photo. Plenty of times we have, you know, quotes or cards or mugs that have sayings on it that are really in alignment with our values and what we believe about our business. We can do flat lays and that can be all part of that story. So when I break it down in that power pose, the working girl, uh, passion portrait, lifestyle lens, future forecast, and storytelling stock, then it really helps people to be like, okay, I get it. Now I can kind of just fill in. I have a product. How can the product be seen? That would be working girl, right? So I can show what the product looks like. Um, I build relationships with my clients and I want them to know how it feels to work with me. So that's going to fit under the category of passion portrait. So I think when you can kind of identify the themes like that, what, what do you already have? What's missing in your library that it really helps people see the bigger picture. And then when you put them all together, your brand is so rich and robust and cohesive and you have images for everything, social media, blog posts, website. It really sort of adds this very layered approach to your brand that makes it really memorable. Yeah. I love that. And there were so many ideas that were sparking for me too. Um, what's the second one again? Like, uh, working girl. yeah, when you were talking about that, all of this, but especially that one can be compiled into photos, Instagram, Facebook, wherever your website, but you can also translate the same messages to reels, to stories, to any kind of video that you're doing. Like, okay, I'm going to sit down and do a reel 
inside the working girl environment. I'm going to show what that's like to work with me and really shape that experience, whether that's video or photo. I love how you break it down in those six. That's and even that. like, you know, I know hiring a brand photographer is an investment. So use your phone. The camera that you have in your phone is a great camera. So now you have the strategy, you have the themes. We can do that in reels, in our iPhone, anywhere. Like it doesn't have, you don't have to wait until you're, you know, spending that high ticket investment. Right. Like be visible now in any way, shape or form that you can. Yeah. I totally, totally agree. So tell us a little bit more about this membership you have and what you work with, with your membership. Yes. Yeah. Thank you for asking. So I have a membership called the Brand Attraction Society, and it's a membership dedicated to branding. I found that um, over the years of being in business, doing both photography and the strategy, that anytime I worked with a client, either one-to-one -one or in a group program, there was always a start and an end date. And what I learned was that branding is really ongoing. You know, you always have to be working on the brand. You know, there could be new technology, a new competitor. You might have a new offering. Um, you might be shifting. There could be a pandemic and then you have to pivot your business completely. And so I found that people were looking for a safe space that had a mentor that could give you real time coaching, but it was ongoing. Yeah. And so I decided to take, you know, all of the coaching and the programs that I've done before and really transfer it into this membership format where um, I have, you know, a group of smart, ambitious women in business, service and products, various fields. And together we're building brands together, all of us. So everybody gets motivated from each other. They have me as their mentor kind of in their back pocket where they can lean on me. We have two calls a month, Zoom calls. And really that's like, you know, real answers in real time. And that's something that um, a lot of them were getting frustrated with, you know, looking at Google or doing a course where it was just one-sided where you were taking a course but you didn't have someone to hash things out to talk to them and brainstorm um, and then the community aspect i think is really the gold um, where we have you know a facebook group which is open 24 7 where people are posting and asking and supporting yeah. and then it's this camaraderie right where you see someone doing something so it motivates you to do something too for your business yeah. so everyone's growing together um, so that's been a lot of fun. I launched it in 2019. So I'm coming to about two years running it. Um, and I've really enjoyed the whole experience. And really, I love being on my toes where you have all these women and they have different problems. Um, and so we're trying to together solve their problems or at least get them to the next best step. Yeah, totally. I think it's so important to have that community of like-minded individuals who are equally as hungry, equally as motivated, equally as dedicated to growing their brands and their business, who don't necessarily know what the next step is, but they're just really energetic about getting to that next step and having those extra minds on your goal and helping you achieve that and holding each other accountable is so, so valuable. I've been a part of a few masterminds and groups in the past, and there's nothing like just being in a group of like-minded people, just willing to do the work and share experiences, advice, ideas. That's super powerful. Yeah. No, definitely. I always say like the women that I seem to attract are action oriented. So they're in it. And if they're in it, they're actually there to do the work. Yeah. Um, they're community minded. So they're always willing to support. It's almost like having your board of directors, right? Mm -hmm. That's there helping you make decisions. Um, and you know, they're just results motivated. They want to make more money. They want to have more impact. And so those three things, um, I feel like I, the more women I get that check those boxes, the more I attract. And it's just really this pool of amazing women. I feel so lucky to um, have and lead that organization. It's really, really fun. I love that. Was that something you felt like you would always do? Did you know back when you started your photography business that you would eventually take on a mentorship program? Or so was I, it something just opportunity presented itself? Let's do it. Yeah, I think... You know, now if I look back and I kind of fill in the blanks of my experience, um, I'm naturally good at leading communities. Mm -hmm. I've always been the hostess, the party planner, um, and having a business like photography is very one-to-one. -one. And so 
you know, there is some burnout that comes from that because you're with one client and then you have to go to another client and then another client and just finding people um, to hire you can sometimes burn you out. And then I always would worry like, what would happen if I hurt my hands or my eyes, right? Like I didn't have anything else in my suite of offerings. And, you know, I think in my year, it was probably 2017. So uh, I've been in business for a long time. And so, you know, after 10 years of doing photography, I was like, I need to really broaden my spectrum of services to just to be careful and smart and diversify. Yeah. What other streams of income? So I started creating some digital courses. I wrote a book and then I did a group program. Uh, I've actually done all of the things, but really the membership, being able to like put everything in a membership and having it at a price point that's, you know, easy, easier to sell versus a high ticket, you know, $2,000 or $3,000 product that's hard to sell. It has a lot of, you know, discovery calls and all of those right. things. It seems like a better business model for me personally. Right. Um, it's a premium membership. So it's not like it's $25. It's, it's actually $197, but I'm keeping it small so that people get my attention for that price point. You know, they know that I'm nurturing them, that I'm building their network with my network. And so I've done that intentionally um, because that's the kind of membership that feels in alignment with my values. Yeah. So. And that's probably, you know, a membership that you would find yourself joining, which yes. again, you mostly attract your ideal clients who are very much like you and equally as energetic, excited about their businesses. So that's, that's awesome. I, I think it's, again, it's super important to find that space. If you don't have that, it's super important to find that just band of like-minded individuals because entrepreneurship can be very lonely. It can be yeah. feel, you can feel like I have to figure this all out on my own. But like you were saying, Google can really only get you so far. YouTube is amazing, but it really can only get you so far. Having that mentor and again that just band of just people who are willing to grow with you is really really important for growth of your business but also just to have a freak out with like to have a yes. bad day with and to go through the trenches the ups and downs and the celebrations especially so if you don't have a community guys and you're looking for one definitely check out malika's so that brings me to a kind of big question kind of our closer question i ask it on every podcast interview that i have and that is was there ever a time in your business you kind of already answered this or in your life where you were what I consider off brand, not working in alignment, not living in alignment with yourself. What was that time and how did you navigate to living back on brand? Mm, that's such a good question. So definitely have had moments of that as an entrepreneur, just because I feel like I've been in this business for so long. And, you know, the longer you in it, the more you see people who leave and exit. And then there are all these like new fresh people that come in. And then there are times I feel like a dinosaur, honestly. Um, but I have to say, you know, speaking for more recently, you know, I moved from New Jersey where I built a really rich network. My brand was well known. I didn't have to chase clients. They came to me and I really was at a great place for my brand. And we moved to Maine for my husband's job during a pandemic. And so, you know, all of a sudden my photography business went dark. You cannot do photography during a pandemic. And so... Yeah. I had all of these like last hurrah cl uh, clients, like I'm leaving New Jersey and I had booked all these people who wanted to work with me. And because of the pandemic, I had to cancel them. And so my revenue took a huge hit. I had to give back money. And that was hard. That was hard, you know, financially. And then just emotionally, you know, not having closure, walking away and having to start in a new place. Um, there was like a mourning period for yeah. me. You know, like I felt like it was like the death of my business at a place and had worked so hard to build it in New Jersey. And then now I was coming to a new place during a time where you couldn't even meet people. Yeah. Um, and I still struggle with it. I mean, I've been here for over a year. It's hard. It's hard to restart. If you are a people person, an extrovert, which is what I am, um, you know, to start from scratch and be in a place that has a different culture, right? And you have to make yourself known and build that know, like, and trust factor and do all the things that I teach. So it's like, I'm now practicing what I'm teaching everyone else and building their brand. Um, 
and I have to do that again. And it's, it's hard. It's hard. You know, I have to give myself space and grace just to recognize that it's hard and yeah. that, you know, I've done it once before and it's not like starting over, I guess. It's just kind of using the experience, leveraging that in this new place. Um, but it, it is hard, full transparency. Like sometimes I'm like, oh my God, I should just go back to agency life or just start something new. It's hard to start over. Like the photography part of my business here, you know, is a slow build. Luckily I have the membership, which is scalable and portable and virtual, thankfully. Um, because I still have a lot of people from New Jersey in that group, but I'm attracting other people, but the photography part has been hard. And so, um, you know, I, I keep, I'm keeping at it, you know, it's like something that's in me. And so, and I believe in it. I, I keep reminding myself sort of the mission behind my business. And, you know, when I feel down, I just remember, like, I know visibility and brand photography right. change people's businesses. So just remembering that purpose behind my business and, you know, putting myself out there again, networking, all the things and just trying new ways to connect with people. Yeah. Thank you for being so honest and transparent, a little bit of vulnerable there. And I think that really speaks to the point of when we're first starting a businesses and whether you're working with a coach or you're Googling and you get that question of why do you want to do this? And we're asking you to really connect with that. Why? This is why this right. is the reason we pull that out of you for these reasons of when we're finding our place ourselves in a completely new location and we find that it's, it's hard. It's hard to connect and really make ourselves known in a way that we were used to just having the clients come to us. This is exactly why you do that foundational work because that foundation never grows away. It just grows. Right. So yep. keep at it. Maine is so lucky to have you. If you're ever back in Jersey, please let me know because I would love to have you do a brand session with me. But that being said, are there any last thoughts that you want to share with us about branding, photography, or anything in between before we say goodbye and definitely tell us where we can find more? Oh, and also you just dropped that you have a book in there. <laughs> what is your book about and where can we find oh, that? Yeah. So I wrote a book um, on brand photography because I felt like there wasn't a resource that really prepped people and everyone kept asking me the same questions and I was like putting them in a Google doc and just cutting and pasting whenever I got asked and I was like, I think there's a book here. Yeah. So it's called the brand photography playbook. Um, you can get a printed copy on Amazon, but I also sell it a digital version, which I'm happy to share the link if you want to put that in your show notes or anything. Yes. Um, but it's really all about planning a brand photo shoot. You know, the strategic side, how do you plan from props to locations to the storytelling, all the things so that you're not, you know, terrified and feeling overwhelmed and stressed on shoot day and instead feeling empowered and excited to bring that story to life. Um, and so, you know, I guess one of the last thoughts I would share with your audience is that visibility is hard, right? Being the face of your brand is so hard, but the benefits, the return on investment that you have in building this brand that has a connecting point of you is so important. And so putting aside the anxiety and like that self-criticalness that we all have, especially as women and remembering Again, going back to that why, that purpose of what you're here, what you're meant to do, the transformation that you're giving, that's what people want to see in you. It's not what you're wearing or what you look like. They want to see your passion, your personality, the purpose behind your business. And you can do that through visual storytelling. And that will get people to connect with you. That will get people curious about you um, and to start that conversation for you to convert them into being clients. Love that. Thank you so much for sharing. And where can people find you? Where do you hang out most? Yeah. So I am often on Instagram and my handle is at Nikki Photo Co. So it's M-I-K-I-F-O-T-O-C-O. -O -O. Um, and then also on my website, which is NikiPhoto.com. So would love to connect to their audience there as well. We'll put all that in the show notes for you guys. Thank you so much for joining us today. It was such a pleasure talking to you. another brand geek. <laughs> yeah, thank you um, so much. So much fun to chat with you today. Yeah, definitely keep in touch. And again, let me know if you're ever in Jersey. Talk to you soon. Talk to you soon. Thanks.
Welcome to the Brand Theory Podcast, the podcast for helping you uncover your passion, realize your purpose, and take the aligned action. Together, we're going to prove the theory that when we live our lives on brand, the possibilities become limitless. I'm your host, Danielle Marchesi, branding expert and business coach. Let's get started.